This is the Bench Warmers Trivia Podcast. We have assembled the world's finest sports and trivia dorks to prove once and for all that we are just as bad at this as we were at sports. Hello, hello. This is the Bench Warmers Trivia Podcast. Sports trivia for those of us who roll the pine. If you're finding us for the first time, welcome and thank you for listening. My name is Eric. I have the pleasure of being your host today. Today, we have two bench warmer teams going head to head. Team one, Scott and Matt versus team two, Mason and Josh. So let's hear about the players today. Team one, give me your name, where you're from, and just for fun, what's your favorite Tom Hanks movie? All right. My name is Scott. I am from Albany, New York. Together, Matt and I comprise the team of the Antonio Freemans. And my favorite Tom Hanks movie, it's probably a lot of people's favorite Tom Hanks movie, Gotta Go Forrest Gump. And I'm Matt. Uh, uh, Let me think. I worked at a sports radio station as an announcer for about uh, four years or so. There you go. Um, And my favorite Tom Hanks movie, man, that's tough. You know, it's it's, uh, Forrest Gump, but my second one's probably Philadelphia. It's a Debbie Downer. But just for fun, I will say that it's Joe versus the Volcano. (laughs) Not Splash. (laughs) No, not splash. All right, team two. Give me your name, where you're from, and I don't want your favorite Tom Hanks movie. I want your favorite pizza topping. All right, um, I'm Mason Guillot, just outside of uh, Baton Rouge, Louisiana, and favorite pizza topping's got to be some Italian sausage, nothing like that. Yeah, and I'm Josh from St. Paul, Minnesota. Uh, Favorite pizza topping is pepperoni and green olive. And our team is LSU Betcha. <laughs> I like that. Very nice. And I just want to point out that no one said pineapple, so no one's losing points on that question. Yeah, because you would get kicked off the show if you said Correct. pineapple. That's... If you would have asked me, I would have said pineapple. Well, maybe I knew that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Welcome to the bench, everyone. Time for the rules. We will be starting off with our tailgate round to warm up the players. This will be followed by four quarters of play, each with a different trivia style. The styles of quarters one through three will change from show to show, and the host will explain them as we go along. In the fourth quarter, our teams will wager from their points accumulated to see who is today's winner. And like any good sporting event, we will have a halftime show after the second quarter with questions all about movies, music pertaining to sports. All right, let's get this underway. All right, let's kick it off with the tailgate here. Three questions. I'll give you two schools that have the same mascot or nickname. All you have to do is give me the nickname. Question one, Fresno State and Butler University. We're uh, checked in. So are we. All right, Antonio Freemans. It is the Bulldogs. And LSU Betcha. That's what we have as well. All right. The answer is the Bulldogs. It'll be 10 points for both teams there. Question two, Northern Illinois and the University of Connecticut. Yeah, we're checked in. You can check in. Likewise. All right, LSU betcha. Uh, We went with the Huskies. And the Antonio Freemans. We went with the Huskies as well. Both teams getting points on that. It is the Huskies. I promise you these are going to get a little harder. Is the tailgate supposed to, you know, be a little easier? All right, question three. University of Rhode Island and Colorado State University. We yeah, can we're check, checked uh, in. We can check in as well. Okay, LSU, that's your, what did you have? Those are the Rams. And the Antonio Freemans. That is correct, the Rams. Both teams getting points yet again. So at the end of the tailgate, everyone gained 30 points on that round, bringing us to the first quarter. Dean's List. Question one. 17 years after selecting Carson Palmer with the first overall pick, Cincinnati Bengals selected Joe Burrow first overall in the 2020 NFL Draft. What I need from you is to give me the previous 10 first overall picks in the NFL draft. And let's start with LSU Betcha. 
All right, uh, we're going to go with Miles Garrett. Miles Garrett is correct. 2017 out of Texas A&M, drafted by the Cleveland Browns. Antonio Freemans. Are we going to go? We're gonna go with you want to go with that one, the one I uh, typed in? Your first one, yeah, go ahead. We're going to go with Kyler Murray. Kyler Murray is correct. 2019, Oklahoma Sooner, drafted by Arizona. You ready for our next one? Yeah, sorry. That's all right. Uh, Baker Mayfield. Baker Mayfield is correct. 2018, again, the Cleveland Browns with the first overall pick. We're going to go with Jared Goff. Jared Goff is correct. 2016, LA Rams drafted him out of the University of California. LSU betcha, you're up. All right, well, we're going to go with uh, Michigan crusher Jadavion Clowney. Jadavion Clowney is correct. 2014 by the Houston Texans. Uh, we're going to go with uh, Andrew Luck. 2012, Andrew Luck, drafted by the Indianapolis Colts. LSU betcha. Uh, the next one we're going to go with is Jameis Winston. Jameis Winston, also correct. 2015, Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Yep, we're going to go with Cam Newton. Cam Newton's also correct. 2011, Carolina Panthers. All right, I think we got one in mind. Uh He's kind of a bust, you'd say. Um, but we're going to go with Eric Fisher. Eric Fisher is correct. 2013 by the Kansas City Chiefs. Yeah. Uh, let's go with uh, Matt Stafford. Matt Stafford is incorrect. He was 2009. So, fellas, do you have a chance to use a mulligan here? No. Or pass it on to LSU Betcha. So you're not using your mulligan on for the one last uh, – no? Okay. Uh, we're going to go with our last uh, guess of Sam Bradford. Sam Bradford is correct. 2010 by the LA Rams. The Rams, yeah. Matt, Actually, I think da- it was the St. Louis, Louis Rams. Or, then, sorry, yep. St. Louis Rams. Okay, so you guys did sweep that list. Next question, question two. So what I need today is I need you guys to name NHL 50 goal scorers. The past 10, going back to 2005, 2006, okay? Some players have done it more than once. I will only want their names once. So if they have done it more than once, don't give it to me twice. All right. And this round or question, we're going to start off with Antonio Freeman's. I think we go with the obvious one first. Yeah. I don't even know how to say his name. Is that yeah. Name? We're going we're gonna to go with uh, Alex Ovechkin. Alex Ovechkin is correct. Next, LSU Betcha. Should we go with the first one that we said? Yeah, let's go with the first one. Uh, Sidney Crosby. Sidney Crosby. 2009-2010 is correct. Antonio Freeman, you guys are up again. All right, go ahead. Do we want to go with Patrick Kane? Yes. Yeah, Patrick Kane. Antonio Freeman is checking in with Patrick Kane. Unfortunately, that is incorrect. Mm, I knew it. Would you guys like to use a mulligan or pass it on to LSU betcha. See, here's the deal. I don't I don't think Josh or Mason are great at NHL stuff either. So Yeah, my only con- my only concern is knowing that one of these he didn't expect us to get any. And I'm wondering if that's the third round. Mm-hmm. And then we're not gonna we're gonna waste the mulligan anyway. We can but use it if you want. You wanna you wanna use it and then go no, with one of because, your No, because I mean I think all these are crapshoots. I don't feel confident enough about any of these so i guess we'll save it and take our chances we can yeah who i mean who knows what the next one could be it could be you know dallas cowboy cheerleaders and i'll get the whole list you know what i mean so <laughs> let's uh let's uh, we'll let the lsu bet you take it so you guys are out right so we can kind of talk yes we can talk it out loud yep so, they have passed so the you know the first one else beyond those two that have been called we have malkin it seems i know that you know he's on the same line as crosby and all but it seems like those two scored all the time. Do you think he would have gotten 50? I mean, based on my limited hockey knowledge, I feel like he it's possible. At least if he didn't get 50, he got very close. And I feel like that's a, a reasonable guess. Okay, should we go with uh, Malkin first? Yeah, let's go with Malkin first and then okay. see what happens from there. Evgeny Malkin. Ellis, you bet, checks in with Evgeny Malkin, which is correct, 2011-2012. And I know that McDavid is young, but I been good though he has been good like I, that's old. probably the one i feel next most strong about but i you know at this point uh, i've exhausted the top people i know 
Yeah, I'm. I mean, we could literally just pick any of the names that we came up with, and they'd be just as legitimate guesses because they're all just names to me. Should we go? Okay. Should we go, McDavid? Yeah, let's let's go for McDavid. All right, McDavid. LSU Betcha came in with McDavid, which is incorrect. McDavid topped out at 41 goals in two separate seasons. Okay. Would you like to use a mulligan? I don't think either of us feel strong enough with any of the – with hockey. We might as well save ours. So, the remainder of the list, you guys kind of danced around one of them there. Um, Steven Stamkos has done it twice. Oh. Um, also on the list, you have Leon Dreisaitl, Corey Perry – Jerome Aginla, Ilya Kovalchuk, Danny Heatley, and Vinny LeCavier. I've heard of uh, two of those other names. <laughs> I've heard of I one. was we were I was between LeCavier <laughs> and uh, and the one the one that we said. Oh man. Well, we yeah, could have gotten him with Stamkos, but uh, you know, yeah, obviously you weren't feeling no. super confident. So, no. all right. On to question three, which will be started off by LSU Betcha. Question three, Masters. Winners. Are you boys ready for some golf? The Masters is the first PGA tournament of the year at Augusta National. Since 2009, there has been 10 winners. Give me the 10 winners. Repeat winners only count as one answer again. Let's start with Antonio Freeman's. That name that I gave you, the first one there, is the literally the only current golfer that's not named Tiger Woods that I know. So also, he also came up on the three I sent you. So <laughs> it was unanimous there. We're gonna uh, go with Jordan Spieth. Jordan Spieth is correct. Winner of the Masters in 2015. LSU betcha. All right, want to go with it? Let's go with Tiger Woods. Tiger Woods is correct. Winning in 2019, one of his five Masters championships. I'm good with either one of those other two that you put down, Scott. So, is there, is there any either one? Do you feel more strongly about than um, the other? All I know is that um, um, what's her face always talks about uh, the bottom guys behind. Um, I don't know if that means he won the Masters, though. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Just because he has a nice ass. <laughs> we'll go with. Uh, Man with the bodacious behind, apparently, uh, Rory McIlroy. Rory McIlroy is incorrect. I think we would like to use our <laughs> mulligan. You sure? <laughs> so you're right. Freeman's using the mulligan. You want to go with the other one? Yeah, I'll do that one. Go ahead. Uh, we'll go with, and I don't even know if that's the one that Aaron likes, so I don't know which one. Everyone, all I know is hey, there's some golfer that Aaron thinks has a nice butt. That's all I know. Uh, we'll go with Brooks uh, uh, Kepka. Brooks Kepka is incorrect. Oh, he didn't win one. That's we the one that, that that's the one that Aaron Barkley thinks of. And we've exhausted Matt's golf knowledge. <laughs> yep, same here. <laughs> I'm glad we got speed. All right, LSU betcha, your chance to run the table here. Uh, this was right around the time I first started watching golf, so I'm pretty sure he he's won multiple ones. That's Bubba Watson. Bubba Watson is correct. 2012 and 2014. Why don't you go with the other one that you you'd sent over? Because if you're pretty sure on I'm, that one too, I'm pretty sure about that. Because he went to um he went to University Lab near LSU, and that's Patrick Reed. Patrick Reed is correct. 2018. Mason is carrying us. What year was that? 2018. Correct. Luckily, my brother-in-law is a big golf fan, so I'm trying to work backwards. Oh. I think one. I think. I don't you, you cut out a little bit there. Who did you say? I, I think lefty Phil Mickelson won one somewhere along the way. I don't know how early. I I, have a, I think he won it before 09, but. Um, it could be one of those on the cusp ones again. Uh, how about Dustin Johnson? Is he one in? I know he's won a U.S. Open. I don't know about a Masters. Um. Oh, what's that guy's name? I just had something flash in my head. He's from South Africa. Shoot. Um, Charlize can... Theron. <laughs> oh, it's um, Charles Schwartzel. I think he might have inadvertently given me something with Charlize Theron. It's Charles Schwartzel. You feel I'm, confident with that? I'm pretty sure. And we have a mulligan anyway. I'm pretty sure. Because I yeah. remember seeing that South African flag on the... Let's go with it. All right, Charles Schwartzel. All right, we have found... Mason's wheelhouse. Charles Schwartzel is correct in 2011. 
Oh. Nah, keep your mouth shut. <laughs> wow. <laughs> he's good at assisting on these questions. He is. He's yeah. He's like Jason Kidd. He's the Jason Kidd of this podcast. First I told you, I, he's he's going to be a great teammate. No, he's always good for the other <laughs> team. Evidently, I'm good for the other <laughs> team. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um. Do you want to try Dustin Johnson? For some reason. Yeah, we, we still have a mulligan. Yeah. I think that's a reasonable answer. I don't know if he did, but okay. awesome. uh, we're going to go Dustin Johnson. Dustin Johnson is incorrect. Mm. Okay, mulligan time. Yeah, golfers that have been good recently over the past few years. Because we have 18 and 19. We don't have 17. Yeah, we don't have 17 or 16. 16. I seem to remember somebody from Spain winning it. I don't know why that sticks out in my head. I feel like there was somebody from there that won it. Maybe that's the 2017 one I'm thinking about. Um, who's the – who was Woods' rival for a long time that was super hyped up, didn't win for a long time? Oh. um, From Spain. Yeah, I know you're talking about now. Mm. Oh, my God, what is his name? Trying to go through Spanish last names in my head and see if something cops up. Garcia, Gar- Sergio Garcia. Yeah. Sergio Garcia. Did that, he that, end I up think, winning one? I, I think he. I think, you, I think that's the 2017 one, if I'm not mistaken. I should think we go? With, should we go with Sergio Garcia? Yeah, let's do that. I think that's the 2017 one. Sergio Garcia. Sergio Garcia is correct. 2017. Nice. All right. Now we're really gonna be scraping the bottom of the barrel. I mean, if you think Mickelson did in that time frame, I'm okay with, I mean, at this point, or Justin Rose, if you want, whatever one you want to throw out there, um, the the top names are kind of fading from my head at this point. Yeah, I'm at this point, I'm starting to, other than those two, I'm, I'm thinking it's more likely Mickelson won one somewhere in there, but neither one of them is pretty strong. I think we just pick one, and if we get lucky, we just go with the other one and <laughs> And then okay. you, if we you get pick, somehow you do it. You've been hot so far. Why don't you pick whichever one you want to go with? All right. I just remember Mickelson having a green jacket. I think that's early enough when I watched, because I started watching golf like 2008, 2009-ish. So okay. I think Mickelson could be in it. I think, that's, I think that's a better guess than Rose of the two. Go with it. All right, let's go Phil Mickelson. Phil Mickelson, Correct. 2010. Okay. Well, bastards. Let's go. I think we should just go Justin Rose because I don't have any more names. In let's my head. go with it. All right. Let's 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 go Justin Rose. And Justin Rose is incorrect. But good run, guys. Golfers, you missed. 2016, Danny Willett. That's the British dude. 2013, Adam Scott. Mm. he's the and, weird putter dude he's the yep. dude that anchored his putts and they got mad at him and yes uh, yeah and 2009 angel cabrera uh, okay yeah i wasn't gonna come up with any of those ones nope they, rec- they seem familiar but not on top of my head mason nice job you were all over the dean's list today Nice work. All right after the first quarter we have a score of antonio freeman's with 90 and LSU Betcha with 170, bringing us to the second quarter. Second quarter today, boys, is going to be Missing Link. This round will consist of five questions with theme-linked answers. The teams will attempt to answer the questions and guess the theme. Each question is worth 20 points. If a team checks in via Zoom chat with the correct, an- with the correct theme before the fifth question, it will earn 100 points and lock the other team out of the theme points. If a team has not checked in with the correct theme before the fifth question, the remaining teams who have not made a theme guess can earn 50 points with a correct answer up to the theme. So missing link, question one. Drafted fifth overall in the 1993 NBA draft by the Minnesota Timberwolves, this player went on to play nine seasons in the league, winning the 1994 slam dunk contest and winning a 2001 NBA championship with the Los Angeles Lakers. I know this one. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Can I say his name, though? We don't give answers, right? Or do no, we? you do. No, we give okay. the answers. All right. We can check in. And, yes, you can say it, Matt. 
Yeah, that we can check in as well. Okay, LSU Betcha, what's your answer? We are going with Isaiah Ryder. And the Antonio Freemans? In the years he was with the Timberwolves, he went by three separate names. It was Isaiah, it was J.R., and it was Junior. And we call him Isaiah J.R. Junior Ryder. I didn't want to step on that for you, bud. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. The correct answer is Isaiah Ryder. Question two. At Ohio State for one season, he rushed for 1,237 yards and scoring 18 touchdowns. This helped the Buckeyes to a 14-0 and record in the 2002 BCS National Championship. Uh, we can check in. And who only and ran no, for one it. season? Who only did it for one season, too? I mean, Yeah, but you figure if he had a season like that at Ohio State, chances are he was probably drafted pretty high. So, But nine, nine times out of ten, actually, I'd even say it's more than that. Uh, Ohio State doesn't have a freshman that runs for crazy yards and wins a championship. It has right. to be some sort of extenuating circumstances. And that's the only reason I thought of Claret is because of his, you know, legal and um, right. educational issues that prevented him from going. But if you're – so I can't think of any other player that had those same or similar issues or something external of football. If it was somebody that went to the NFL, you think – I mean, you would think if they had a season name. like that. but Yeah. Okay, yeah, let's – um. I know. I know. Let's it's go. Wrong. No, let's go with Claret. No, let's. Yeah, okay. we're gonna lock in. We're gonna check in with Maurice Claret. Okay, Antonio Freeman's are checked in with Maurice Claret. LSU um, betcha. What did you have? LSU betcha. We also have Maurice Claret. Both teams getting points on this. The correct answer is Maurice Claret. I was overthinking it, Matt. I forgot he said freshman in '02, which would have made him draft eligible. Oh, in 04, 05. As soon as I, rem- soon as I remembered point. that, yeah, because yeah, he I took really that year off and he was going to come back. I think, right? So, so what it happened injured, was, right? no, Claret tried to declare after his freshman season. Um, there is a rule in the NFL: you have to be three years out of high school before you can declare for the draft. There's a big long court battle. Um, he won the first battle, but then it was later overturned, so he technically could not be eligible draft eligible until 2005 is when he went in. Uh, a day one pick. Uh, of the 2005 NFL draft in the third round by the Denver Broncos. Okay. Yeah, both teams are getting points on that. Going on to question number three. This player, winner of three Golden Glove Awards while playing for the San Diego Padres in 1995, 96, and 97, he was unanimous, unanimously selected as the National League's MVP in 1996. You can check in. All right, Antonio Freemans are checked in. LSU betcha, talk it out. I don't have anything coming to mind. Roger, right I mean, Tony Gwynn? I mean, I can't really think of anyone else if, I mean. I don't have anything. So he's locking with Tony Gwynn? Yeah, I guess that's better than nothing. Or we'll check in with uh, Tony Gwynn. All right, LSU betcha's checked in with Tony Gwynn. And Antonio Freemans, what do you got? Uh, we locked in with Ken Caminiti. One team getting points on this. The correct answer is Ken Caminiti. Moving us on to question four. Edging out Rafael Palmero by seven hits, this player has the most hits in the 1990s. He went on to win a World Series in 2001 as a member of the Arizona Diamondbacks, not the team he started his career with in 1988. Oh, we're going to check in. All right, Antonio Freeman's checked in. I'll see you betcha. Talk it out. So the first name that popped in my head was Matt Williams. Gonzalez is another last name that's popping in my head. I can't think of his first name. Uh, this is just like the last question. I really don't have much to go off of on this one. Um, that seems reasonable. So I'd say either Williams or Gonzalez, and I'm, you know. Maybe Williams might be better. I'd. All right. Gosh. We'll check in with uh, Williams. Right, LSU you betcha. Checking in with Williams. Antonio Freemans, what did you have? Yeah, we went with Mark Grace. All right, one team getting points on this. The correct answer is Mark Grace. Good pull, Scott. Thank you, sir. Mark Grace drafted by the Cubs in 1988, spending we, most of his career there. We thought it was – I was on the Matt Williams train for a while, and then I kind of thought he was just a slugger. He wasn't known for getting a lot of base hits, mm-hmm. and he, he was always injury-prone and missed a lot of time. Who's that? Am I think? 
Did I have the right name? Gonzalez, isn't that? Luis yeah. Gonzalez. Luis, yeah. Luis Gonzalez. Luis Matt Gonzalez. thought that too, but he didn't start his career until the late 90s, so there's no way he would have led the decade. All right, question five. Drafted in 2001, this player finished his career with 6,109 yards rushing, averaging seven yards a carry over his 15-year career. He has signed two $100 million contracts with two different teams. Can we can check in with that, Matt. Antonio Freemans are checked in. Ellis, you betcha. Talk it out. How many yards did you say it was? 6,109. Over a 15-year career. So, using my quick math skills, it's about 400 yards a year, which a running back, that doesn't seem like he would stick around for 15 years. So, that leads me to think. Sorry, right. And if a running back's only getting 400 yards a year on average, I don't think he's going to be signing 200 plus million dollar contracts. Yeah. So, so it's I think probably he might be a, on the right that quarter, a quarterback. Yeah. And so mobile quarterback 2001 leads me to Vic. I'm trying to think anyone else that was drafted in 2001 that would have stayed around that long. Was Vic all the way in 2016? I guess he was because he played for the. Jets and Steelers in the tail end. So maybe he would have stuck around that long. I'm thinking just because that number tells me that's going to be a quarterback and Vic fits the bill. And I, he probably did do big contracts like that. I'm just having a hard, you know, like I think he probably would have with his first contract. I'm just not sure what would have he signed a hundred plus million with the Eagles. But wasn't that, coming, that was coming back after the dog fighting thing, right? Yeah. I don't know if they would have paid him. Do you think they paid him that much? Uh, I mean, he was good. I don't know if he was worth that much money. I don't really have a second guess or anything that stands out to me. Not, I mean, I can't think of a player that maybe started as a running back and transitioned or something or vice versa that would fit that. Yeah, I'm, you know, I'm okay. I, I don't have anything better if you want to. Okay. I think we're going to uh, check in with Michael Vick. LSU Vet just checked in with Michael Vick and Antonio Freemans. What'd you go with? So LaDainian Tomlinson was in the 2001 draft with Michael Vick. So immediately I jumped on LaDainian Tomlinson. Then Mason started doing his math, and I knew as soon as he said that, that it's 100% Michael Vick. However, we had already checked in with LaDainian Tomlinson. Damn you, math. <laughs> <laughs> All right, one team getting points here. The correct answer answer is Michael Vick. Nice job on the math there, Mason. I had I done the math, I would have been right there with you. All right, so we're still just waiting on the theme from LSU Betcha. So we we still have a chance to. Does that mean we didn't get it right? If they still. Well, I say I was gonna, I was still waiting for if them. They to got it, it right. Over. If they, they got it not, right. They, they didn't. I mean, they it's it was close, but I can't I, I can't take it. Okay. Because I was going to say, because if they got it right, it wouldn't make – and if they put it in before this round. No. So Antonio Freeman's checked in with a theme after question four. All right. So we have J.R. Ryder, Maurice Isaiah, Claret. Isaiah Ryder, Ken Maurice Claret, Ken Caminiti, Mark Grace, and Michael Vick. I mean, Maurice Claret went to prison, I do believe, but I don't maybe, think any of the others did. they all did. go to prison? <laughs> Did J.R. Ryder go to prison? Oh, Michael Vick. Did Michael, Michael Vick, Vick went did? to prison. Did they all? I don't know about any of the others. I can't imagine Mark Grace would have gone to prison. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? I got nothing better. I mean. Spent time I, in prison? Yeah, let's go for it. Sure. All right. All five of these guys spent time in prison. <laughs> I don't believe Ken Caminiti did any time in prison, but I'm going to take it because they were all convicted of a crime. Oh, so I will award points to LSU Betcha for that. That's, that's closer than troubled athletes. Yes. <laughs> there's a lot of tro- there's a lot of troubled athletes, but they weren't convicted of anything. I kept waiting for Dennis Rodman to come up to confirm it for me. Like, <laughs> yeah. So they they have they were convicted in a court of law. So it's not just you know okay. Baker Mayfield running away from somebody drunk. This oh, is so. What was Mark Grace convicted of? DUI. Uh, wow. Well, oh, okay. And right. endangerment. So I actually have everything. Isaiah Ryder was possession of cocaine, battery, evading police officer. <laughs> Not a surprise. Uh, what a great Maurice, guy. Maurice Claret, armed robbery, possession of a concealed weapon without a permit, failure to maintain current lane. 
he did all that while driving. Um, <laughs> Ken Caminiti, cocaine possession. Mark Grace, endangerment and DUI. And Michael Vick, I think everybody knows, conspiracy related to dog fighting. Yeah, all right. Eric, I got to commend you. That was a, a really that was good, a good one. I like it, yeah. Oh, yeah, that a, was great. I got a better one for next time, so don't worry. That, about that. That, was, that one was good. I like that one. Right. I'm, I'm upset because uh, so close. So after the second quarter, we have scores of Antonio Freeman's with 170 and LSU Betcha, 280. All right, let's move on to the halftime show. There will be five questions, movie and music related. Each question worth 20 points. Brett Favre makes a guest appearance as himself in There's Something About Mary. Lance Armstrong plays himself in Dodgeball. In 1985, John Matuzak appeared in a movie, but not as himself. What is the name of his character that was kept locked up in the basement? We can check in. LSU betcha checked in. Freeman's talk it up. We'll check in with Sloth. All right, Antonio Freeman's checked in with Sloth and LSU betcha. What did you we have? Checked, we checked in with the same, Sloth. All right, both teams getting 20 points on this question. The correct answer is Sloth from the movie Goonies. Question two. What movie starring Kevin James in 2012 was about a former collegiate wrestler named Scott Voss, who is now a 42-year-old apathetic biology teacher in a failing high school? When cutbacks threaten the school's music program and its teacher, played by Henry Winkler, Scott dusts off his long unused wrestling skills and earns money for the program by moonlighting as a mixed martial arts fighter. All right, I think we're going to check in. Right. LSU is checked in. Antonio Freeman's talk about. Bring the pain jumped in my head first. I like it. Let's do it. We're going to check I, in I, with. You sure? I know. Hold on a second before we check in. Are you sure it's not Mall Cop? Yes. Based on the synopsis, <laughs> I think we can rule out. We can also rule out, I now pronounce you Chuck and Larry. I'm going to need oh. you to specify which mall cop movie. <laughs> of course. Obviously the second one. All right. All right. Uh, we're going to check in with Bring the Pain. Okay. Uh, Antonio Freeman's are checked in with Bring the Pain. LSU Betcha, what'd you go with? Uh, well, I remember seeing the ads and the song popped in my head, which gave me the title. I just remember seeing that advertisement. Um, it's called Here Comes the Boom. One team getting 20 points here. Right. The correct answer is Here Comes the Boom. Good pull, man. I have the best teammate. Nice yeah, pull that's there. a good one, buddy. Good job. Nice pull. All right. Bringing us to question three. I'm going to go ahead and say this right now. The Little Giants is a great movie. I don't care what Rotten Tomatoes says. All right. Spoiler alert. In this movie, the Little Giants win the big game at the end thanks to what play? All right. We're checking in. All right. LSU Betch is checked in. We're also checked in. Antonio Freemans are also checked in. All right. Antonio Freemans, what did you go with? Go ahead, Matt. I believe that the uh, kid went to his computer and typed up a bunch of craziness. And he pulled out the annexation of Puerto Rico. And LSU betcha. That's the only thing I actually know about that movie is Little Giants <laughs> and the annexation of Puerto Rico. So that's what we went with as well. Right, both teams getting 20 points on this. The correct answer is the annexation of Puerto Rico. All right. Let's move on to question four, boys. Balls of Fury is a movie about the dangerous world of, you guessed it, ping pong. Cast include George Lopez, Thomas Lennon, Terry Crews, Aisha Tyler, Pat Oswalt, and what man who played Fang, the main villain of the movie? Well, since I'm going to be the one telling you I'm checking in, it's probably the wrong answer because it's just a wild guess on my part. But we're checking in. You want to check in with that one there, Scott? Yeah, we're checking in too. All right, both teams are checked in. Antonio Freeman's, what's your answer? Yeah, you know, when it comes to balls and bad guys, I think of Ben Stiller. All right. Antonio Freeman's checked in with Ben Stiller and LSU Betcha. I saw this movie, I think, once. I thought that the I thought that the the bad guy was an older white guy. So uh we went with Christopher Walken. LSU Betcha checks in with Christopher Walken. One team getting points here. The correct answer is Christopher Walken. Wow. Nice wow. pull, Josh. Good job, bud. Wow. I had like 5%. I was like, eh. Right. Bringing us to question five. 
I'm going to read you guys a brief synopsis of a movie. I just need you to name the movie. Baby oil, bulging biceps, perfect pecs abound in this documentary that takes a fascinating look behind the scenes of Mr. Olympia bodybuilding contest. The story centers around rigorous training the men undergo to develop those muscular bodies. Yeah, I'm good to check in with that. I mean, yeah, I think it's something slightly different. Hold on. Okay, that's fine. I mean, I've got nothing, so this is all you. I hope you can pull a Josh here. I'm going to go with that one. Yeah, we're checking in. All right, Antonio Freeman's checked in. LSU bitch, you're talking about. Are you comfortable with me just going with pumping iron and we'll yeah, see if I'd... that's if that's it? Yeah, because, I mean, I don't have a complete title for the other one, so I feel like All right. we have something. All right, so we're going to check in with Pumping Iron. All right, LSU Betch just checked in with Pumping Iron. Antonio Freeman's, what's your answer? Yeah, we did the – I think we had the same conversation amongst us. We went around with, like, getting jacked and pumping and iron and all, like, around and over and over. And finally, we were going to go with getting pumped, but then I remember I, I think that original documentary was called Pumping Iron. So, and it might be something different, Josh, but the one I remember is just Pumping Iron. I know he's done other movies where he, documentary stuff, but we'll go with Pumping Iron. Okay, both teams getting points on this. The correct answer is Pumping Ooh. Iron, right. starring Arnold Schwarzenegger and everyone, Lou, Lou, Lou Ferrigno. Ferrigno. <laughs> that brings us to the end of halftime. Antonio Freeman's with a score of 230. LSU Betcha. 380. All right, bringing us to the third quarter. Today's third quarter is going to be pre and post game. This round will be five before and after style questions. For example, if I said what all time leader in receptions for the Indianapolis Colts was a Notre Dame safety drafted by the Minnesota Vikings, the answer would be Marvin Harrison Smith. So five questions, 20 points apiece. Question number one. Detroit Red Wings goalie, who was runner-up for the 2009-2010 Calder Memorial Trophy and ranked the fourth best tight end in New York Giants history, according to Ranker.com. I don't even know four Giants tight ends. Great. You'd be surprised how many you know. You want to check in with that one, Scott? I mean... That's all we got. Go for it. Not not what I just put? <laughs> <laughs> I like it better, but, you know, the other one, I think we actually have a legitimate chance, but that, that one, that one, right, will, right. at least yeah, I'll we'll we'll make them laugh. We'll, we'll check in with the, uh, the one that maybe has a 1% chance of being correct. All right, Antonio Freeman's are checked in. LSU, bet, LSU betcha. So I, we're just going to, we'll check in with uh, Curtis Joseph Fanica. All right, LSU is checked in with Curtis Joseph Fanica and Antonio Freeman's so I obviously wanted to put Ron Jeremy Shockey because Jeremy Shockey <laughs> was the first tight end that came into my brain. Then I'm thinking like Martellus Bennett played there, but he wasn't there long enough to be the, and whose you know, last name is Martellus. And so the only goalie I could think of also was Curtis Joseph. Cause I always thought the Cujo nickname was kind of cool. Um, so then I, we tried to come up with a tight end whose first name was Joseph. I couldn't think of one. Matt mentioned a name earlier on, so we just went with Curtis Joseph Osgood. Unfortunately, no team's getting any points here. The correct answer is Jimmy Howard Cross. I've never heard of either of those guys. (laughs) No, I would have been better off getting Ryan Howard Cross. (laughs) Are those real people? (laughs) Really? Nobody? Not either? And the answer to the question is (laughs) obscure, obscure, obscure. Not uh, Jimmy Howard is not obscure. Howard Cross may be a little bit. Who? Am I off the hook for Patrick Ramsey? Yeah, exactly. You are. <laughs> we could Patrick do... Ramsey is way more obscure than Jimmy Howard. We can do great on questions. I think Mason would have gotten Danica Patrick Ramsey. <laughs> I know who Patrick Ramsey is. I don't know who either of these people are. <laughs> oh, that proves it. Scott, you are no off idea. the hook. Eric has taken the uh, – Yes. And that's, right. this is the first one, guys. This is the All first right. one. All right. Well, number five, I just, should I just erase it now? <laughs> Hey, you wrote them. Let's go with it. All yeah. right, here we go. Question two. Became the first publicly gay player drafted in the NFL. Drafted second overall in the 1984 NBA draft in between Hakeem Olajuwon and Michael Jordan. We can check in. Yeah. So we're going to check in with uh, Michael Sam Bowie. 
right, LSU Betches checked in with Michael Sambui and Antonio Freemans. What do you got? Yeah, I, I pulled a uh, an Eric from the last game and knew the answer before you finished the question on this one, thankfully. <laughs> it's uh, it's definitely Michael Sambui. So no one knows who Jimmy Howard is, but everybody knows who Michael Sambui is. All right. <laughs> Correct answer is Michael Sambui. And that great CFL career that lasted like about a game and a half, didn't he? <laughs> That's correct. All right, question number three. In 1998, he starred as Jesus Shuttlesworth in a Spike Lee film and led the 2015 Jacksonville Jaguars in receptions, receiving yards, and receiving touchdowns. Check yeah, in we're, we're checked in. We're checked in. All right, both teams checked in. LSU Betcha, what do you got? Go with it. Uh, Ray Allen Robinson. Okay, and Antonio Freemans. Well, Scott wanted me to say Tay, but I'm pretty sure it's Ray Allison. <laughs> Ray <laughs> Allen Robinson. All right, both teams getting points on that. The correct answer is Ray Allen Robinson. All right, question number four. 1997 AL batting champion with the Chicago White Sox. 2003 Frozen Four MVP with the University of Minnesota. All right, we'll check in. All right, LSU Betches checked in. Antonio Freeman's talk it out, please. Batting champ from the White Sox when they they also they had like a young Mike Cameron, young Maglio Ordonez, but those guys didn't win any batting titles. There wasn't any Gopher hockey player with the first name Ordonez. I know that for sure. <laughs> you sure out there in Minnesota? I don't know. You don't remember Ordonez McGee? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Ordonez Ramsey Smith. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 don't, I have no idea on this one. Um, like, I can't even think of the, the White Sox player would be other than Frank Thomas. In I'm just trying to think of. All right, why don't we do this then? Why don't we stick with Frank Thomas? So we'll go Thomas something, and you come up with some sort of Minnesota last name. But Grant Patoni had a brother that played for the Gophers then, too. All right, so let's go Thomas Let's Patone. go Thomas Patoni. Yeah, so, so Frank we're gonna Thomas check Patone. Patone. Yeah. All right. Antonio Freemans are checked in with – I don't even know what you said, but it's wrong. <laughs> sure. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Matt, you're going to kick yourself. And LSU betcha. Uh, we checked in with Frank Thomas Vanek. The correct Some answer is Frank Thomas Vanek, who just retired back in February. That's funny because during the uh, the goals question, I was like, maybe Daniel Briere, And I was like, no, he played with Vanek on the Sabres, and they might have cut into each other's <laughs> goals. And now it's Thomas freaking Vanek. Come on. All right. Well, here's uh, question five, which I have no confidence in anybody getting. So I don't just, either. Let's go ahead and read it. Um, tight end who finished the 2009 season with 100 catches becoming only the second tight end in NFL history to have 100 receptions in a season since 2009 there has been three more people to do it so you know at the time he was only the second fourth overall pick in the 1974 NHL draft by the Islanders his number nine was retired by the Islanders in 1996 and inducted into the Hockey Hall of Fame in 2002 I can see why you said we weren't going to get this one your lack of 50 goal scorer knowledge just didn't help think I was going to get a, a, a answer to a 1974 New York Islander. Yeah, that's, that's, that was a good assumption. <laughs> I think you're right on that, Scott, on your first part of it. Yeah. I just don't have any clue that what that makes person's me, first name. That doesn't make me feel any better, unfortunately. I wish it so did. Pick one of, those joke, uh, one of those joke ones that I put in there. Yeah. I like the uh, one, the, two, the, three, the fourth one. one down. Or you like the bottom one? I like the one above it. <laughs> All right. All right. Let, let me let me Let's just set this th- set this straight right now. One Ron Jeremy joke per podcast. <laughs> All right. That's, that's, that's the max. And All that's right. probably too many, actually. Yes. But yeah, that's fair. All right. So the question is, are we going to come up with the same joke answer? That'll be the question. <laughs> yeah. I guess we can check in with our uh, yeah, we're checked yeah, in joke answer. All right. Joke both answer. teams both teams checked in. All right. Ellis, you betcha, what'd you have? We have Dallas Clark Griswold. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Close. All right. And Antonio <laughs> Freeman's. Well, we had not. that too, so but we're gonna go with Dallas Clark Vanek. <laughs> <laughs> hey, at least it's a hockey name. <laughs> yeah. All right. Unfortunately, nobody's getting points. The correct answer is Dallas Clark Gillies. Okay. Oh, of course. D- yeah. Griswold was closer. It starts with a G. We had the first letter. <laughs> yeah. Half points. All right, half. All right, after the third quarter, 
brings us to the Antonio Freemans with 270 points. LSU Betcha, 440. That brings us to the fourth quarter, our final round known as Put Your Fours Up. This round consists of five categorized questions that teams will wager up to 100 points each on, but not to exceed their current point total. Let's go through the categories. Our categories today are NFL Drought, Summer Olympics, NCAA Football, NFL career stats and World Series. That's good, Matt. I'm good with that. You can send it over to him. Yeah, that's too. That's five too many, though. So I'm going to go five so, less on that first one. Uh, okay, that's fine. No, no, no. I take it back. Five less on the second one. I'd rather do. Okay, cool. I'd, I'd rather do that one. I'm sure that five points will make a huge difference. I know, right? The last one. Okay, I'll send that over to him. Yeah, let's do that. I think we'll, we can get that. All right. I think so. you guys won. Don't overthink it. Here we <laughs> go. <laughs> it's possible. First category, NFL drought. The Cincinnati Bengals have the longest active drought since their last playoff win. Their last win was in 1990. That should easily be enough to hold the record for the longest playoff win drought. This team, however, holds the record with 51 years in between playoff victories. I say we go with that last one there because they were crappy pretty much from the 40s up until like I didn't realize they were around in the 40s. Yeah, we can do that then. Should we check in with that one? Uh, um, I think that seems reasonable, but... I mean, I don't really have a strong inkling on... I mean, they could have made... The playoffs they just would have lost in the first round yeah yeah i don't know if we said it but we're checked in all right tony freeman's checked okay. in ellis you betcha talk about how well, should we check in with the detroit lions yeah that's the best thing i got all right, we're gonna check in with the detroit lions all right ellis you betcha checked in with the detroit lions and antonio freeman's what's your answer we will go with one of the original teams we will go with the chicago st louis and arizona cardinals all right, one team getting points here. The correct answer is the Arizona Cardinals. Oh, you had that one as one of your – I just knew they were an older team, but I I didn't have, I had no idea. We, we, bet, we bet 50 on that one. And we bet 25. All right, the Arizona Cardinals actually won uh, – I'm not sure what league it was, but a championship was in 1947, not winning again until 1998 where they beat the Cowboys. 1947 was the NFL. They were one of the original teams. 1921 was the starting year. Yeah, and Mason, you were saying the, uh, or you guys chose the Lions. They actually did make it to a conference championship with Barry Sanders. 1991. Yeah, yeah I was going to say they went to the 91 NFC championship game. But, you know, I wouldn't, for all I know, they could have gone 51 years before that. You know. They won in the 50s. They won a, yeah. they won a championship. All right, on to question two. Summer Olympics. What sport was introduced by the Olympics in 1896, removed by the Olympics in 1924? However, it was reintroduced in 1988 and continues to be a part of the game as of this day. We're going to check in our answer. Antonio Freemans are checked in. LSU betcha. Well, Mason, you, you threw out golf and tennis as possible ones. Yeah. I seem to remember golf coming back more recently, like 2012, 2016. I want to say it came yeah. back. It's been much I, like, more. Re- from those two, tennis is the one that uh, gives me a little bit more of a um, positive vibe. I'm trying to think why they would why it would be canceled, if there's a reason for it. I mean, for that long of a stretch, I don't think there's necessarily a great reason. I'd, I'd, be, I'd be fine if we wanted to check in with tennis. And- that seems reasonable, I think. We'll lock in with tennis. All right, LSU bet you locked in with tennis. And Antonio Freeman's, what's your answer? We locked in with, um, you know, the best sport that exists ever in the world, bowling. All right, one team getting points. The correct answer, tennis. Ah. How many points we, did you? How many points did LSU bet you risk on that? Uh, we we wagered twenty five points. And Antonio Freeman. We wagered 20. 
All right, bringing us to question three, NCAA football. Following a heated match, rematch between two Western colleges, LeGarrette Blunt punched opposing player Brian Hout in the face, resulting in Blunt being suspended for the remainder of the season. He was reinstated in November, so I guess it wasn't the entire season. Name the two schools that played that day. And just to be difficult, I'm going to need the college and the school's nickname. Should we lock in with that? You, do you, yeah. As soon as you type that one, that felt like it really ringed, rung a bell for me. Yeah, I think, I think we're good with that. I think it's probably the best we can do with that. I think it's right. that one. And we're going we're gonna to check in. Scott, I think it's the last one I said. That's the only one that they would have played. They're they're checked in, so we can. Yeah, so talk I mean, here. my thought process was uh, it must have been an early early season game, so it wasn't a conference game. So that eliminates Pac ten slash twelve slash fourteen slash whatever number they <laughs> yeah. have today. Um, so then I was thinking because he mentioned rematch that it was probably a bowl game, a rematch of maybe the previous year's bowl game. Or at least a team that they play maybe like a home and away where they had a rematch the, from the season before, which made me think, well, it's got to be a Mountain West team or it's got to be something, a the, you know, a whack team. So then I'm thinking, what are the power powerful teams in those conferences? And the only one that came to my mind, I mean, I know New Mexico and New Mexico State once in a while might creep into the top 25, but they're not. Utah and Nevada sometimes, you know, Utah is is in Pac-12 now or whatever they are now, but Nevada sometimes. But the only one that is consistently creeping in the top 25 or the top 10 is Boise State. So I think it's got to be the Oregon Ducks and the Boise State. Broncos. The the Broncos. Yep, Broncos. Yeah, all right. Sounds good to me. I don't have anything better. with that. Oregon Ducks, Boise State Broncos. All right, Antonio Freemans are checked in. How much did you wager? 75. All right, they have checked in for 75 points with Oregon Ducks and Boise State Broncos and LSU Betcha. How much did you wager and what's your answer? We um, wagered we wagered 25 points and we also said the Oregon Ducks and the Boise State Broncos. All right, both teams getting their points. Correct answer, Oregon Ducks and the Boise State Broncos. Nice poll, Matt. Bringing us to question four, NFL career stats. There's been many great tight ends through the years, but only four have accumulated over 10,000 yards in their career. There is a golden flash, a tiger, a volunteer, and a golden bear. I need three of the four of these all-time great tight ends. All right, the uh, Antonio Freemans are checked in. All right, LSU betcha. Talk it out. I don't know. I, I feel pretty comfortable if we want to go with Witten, Gonzalez, and Gates. I'm Witten and Gonzalez should be top four. I think Gates is... I, I don't know why Gates wouldn't be. I mean, yeah, he's played he, for so long. And, and he, he was like he that top... I, I think he just retired. Yeah, so... So... I'm, I'm fine with it. And he was, like, he was like the number one target often oh, yeah. for... Uh, what's his name? I can't think of his name. For Rivers. For Rivers. So... Yeah, I feel I feel good with Witten, Gonzalez, and Gates. Okay, um, I'm good with good it. With as well. All right, we'll yeah. check in with Witten, Gonzalez, and Gates. Okay, and how many points did you wager? We wagered fifty. All right, and Antonio Freeman's. How much did you wager? And your answer? We uh, we wagered seventy-five, and Jason Witten, the Volunteer, Tony Gonzalez, the Cal Golden Bear. And Antonio Gates, who played basketball at Kent State, the Flash. So we locked in with Witten, Gates, and Gonzalez. All right, both teams getting points there. Correct answer. The one player you missed was Shannon Sharp. He's the fourth one we had. Got him. He's the fourth right. one we had. So. Yep. <laughs> Shannon Sharp came in at 10,060 yards. And next on the list, Antonio Gates with 11,841 yards. Jason Witten with 12,977 yards. And number one, Tony Gonzalez with 15,127 yards. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Good job backing into that, guys. That was a nice work there. The whole time I just wanted to help you and just be like, Antonio Gates is Kent State. Mason, you're right. 
All right, bringing us to our final question. World Series. Trailing the Astros, Astros two to one in the seventh inning of this game seven, the Nationals took a three to two lead after Will Harris gave up a two run home run to what player? Want to check in with that, Matt? You fine with that? Yeah, I just if you have if you have it, I'm gonna get it. I like I'll know it, but I can't come up with the name right. I'm now. trying to go through their lineup right now, and that's not getting me anywhere. All right, we're gonna check in then. Until the Freemans are checked in, feel free to talk it up. I'm thinking Kendrick just seems more likely, but I'd. I mean, that was the first one that popped in my head, but the minute you said one, Soto, that. We are at a stalemate. Oh, we just need to pick one. Okay. Um, I'm just. Try- I'm. I'm going to trust your baseball knowledge more than me on this. When you said Howie Kendrick, just it just it feels right. better, but I'd because I didn't really watch it closely, so I'm just thinking of. Right. Should we go with Howie Kendrick? Yeah, I let's just. Go for All it. right, we'll check in with Howie Kendrick. All right, and how many points did you wager? 25. 25. All right, and Antonio Freeman's, how much did you wager in your answer? You mind if I take this one, Matt? Thank you. Uh, we wagered 75 points. Uh, Mason, I did the same thing. I typed out the lineup in the, in the chat here to Matt, and I was like, all right, Zimmerman, uh, you know, I knew it wasn't Trey Turner. I actually knew that it wasn't Rendon. Um, then I was like, was it Matt Wieters? Because he was the catcher. Was it Victor Robles in center field? Uh, but then I remember Soto and the stat of him being one of, if not the youngest player to homer in a World Series game. And then I remember that Howie Kendrick hit a clutch home run in that World Series. So we checked in with Howie Kendrick. <laughs> so the exact same process. All right. Except it took me 45 seconds. And yeah, 45 it took us 45 minutes. minutes. Right, yeah. right. <laughs> So I would like to point out that that last question did decide the game. It was all up to that, and both teams got points on that because the correct answer is Howie Kendrick. Man, I wish you guys could have said Juan Soto. Knocked one off the foul pole, giving the Nationals their first World Series championship. Wow. So that brings us to the end of the game. And with – and the Freemans with 500 points – And then we have our clipboard captains of the game winning the coveted Gail Gilbert Award with 515 points. Oh, LSU betcha. Nice work, guys. You almost talked yourself out of the right answer. Oh, and that would have. That uh, that, that was was it. All right, Mason, thanks for sticking with uh, my gut on that one because – you, just, you guys talking about it? I'm like, oh, my God, he's going to talk himself out of the right answer. No, and see, <laughs> man, and I were sitting here chatting to each other saying that they're going to talk themselves into the right answer. Like they've yeah, been they're going to back game. themselves into it. They've been doing that all, <laughs> all game. game. They've been backing into the answer every and it's single ter- time. Hey, and that's exactly what you should it's do. Great, it's great, though. It's, yeah. yeah, it's Mason, terrific work. Mason, I'm over Mason, here like, had, Mason had the right answer, and, and Josh kept saying, is like, Soto, Soto, Soto. I know, and I'm like, just lock in with Soto. I'm over here like, I would have been banging the table. I should have muted myself, and I would have like started banging on the table. <laughs> so when did Soto hit his home run and – it wasn't in game seven. His was like, okay. he had a big one earlier in the series. But I remember him being like, because he's, tw- he's 21. Yeah. So it was like, he's either the youngest or second youngest to homer in a World Series game or something. It was a big deal. That was, that was, <laughs> that was so clutch. It was perfect. That was, and it all came down to that at the very end. I mean, that's what it's all about, fellas. Well, and that's why it took so long is because I was like, we probably need this to be right. Yeah. Unless we guess the same wrong answer. Right. You know, so. Thanks for listening to the Bench Warmers Trivia Podcast. Until next time, we'll keep the bench warm. That ball hit high and deep. Stretch. Stretch. Get on back there. They look up. You can put it on the board. Yes. Yes. Into deep left center for Mitchell. And we'll see you tomorrow night. That great music you're listening to is by Justin Nozick. Thanks to him for producing that music for us. You've been listening to the Bench Warmers Trivia Podcast. Make sure to check us out on all of our social media. We are at Bench Warmers TP.